All right, hello everyone. This is Charles Rayburn. I am a Senior Manager of Customer Success here at ServiceNow, um, overseeing the MedSled CSAs, as well as helping out with our global CSA organization. Uh, this is the office hour number 35. Wow, um, since we started last year. So and it's gonna be on ITBM roadmap planning. So for those who are attending in person, thank you guys so much. For those listening to the recording, if you have any questions, as always, reach out to us and we'll try to answer some of those questions. But we have here Namita, who's gonna be our subject matter expert talking about roadmap planning. The office for our format as always, the first 30 minutes is kind of going over the topic of nature and hand, any demos, presentation, et cetera, will be covered. And then the remaining 30 minutes is open for Q&A. For those who are on the call, I will be looking at the chat window and seeing if there's any questions and we'll be uh, kind of monitoring that and ask Amita and others based upon what you submit uh, those questions for you. And then at the end, we'll just have an open uh, forum. So with that said, Amita, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Charles. Greetings, everyone. And good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. This is Namita and today we are going to speak about an exciting capability, which is the roadmap planning. So let me share my screen, the PowerPoint deck here. Before I start with the roadmap planning, I would like to spend some time on the alignment planner workspace. And I would also like to share with you what's the future where as the product we are taking the alignment planner workspace so that you are aware what's coming up next, uh, you know, in this space. So the alignment planner workspace is basically built uh, to provide an end-to-end -end integrated experience for the personas like portfolio manager, product manager, you know, the application owner, basically any persona who is responsible for creating a future plan for their organization, for prioritizing the, you know, the items. So for those kind of folks, this alignment planner workspace is one unified experience. Now, in QBAC, we have provided one capability in this workspace, which is roadmap planning, but as I said, this is basically to provide end-to-end -end integrated experience. So the next, what I'm going to tell you is that going forward in the coming releases after Rome, what you can expect on this alignment workspace is basically, you know, other capabilities such as the goal setting, the, you know, the funding, the capacity planning, and then finally tracking all the work that is done. And if it is not working as you know it was planned earlier, as well expected, you can always change your plan. You can adjust the plan and make the changes so that you know it is aligned to the goals that you have set in the beginning. And then you can measure the outcomes. You can measure the success at the end. So basically, this is the future of the alignment planner workspace. But today, uh, my focus will be on one capability which is the roadmap planning which is already uh, available on on the in the product so what this roadmap planning is uh, the the roadmap planning is basically to allow the portfolio managers and bu lead kind of persona to create the layout of their plan now this plan they can share with other stakeholders they can make the changes and by using the roadmap planning, they can easily adjust the priorities by simply, you know, the cool UI, something like the drag and drop facility, so that, uh, you know, there is not much uh, screen changes. You can just use the drag and drop and make the changes there. What I'll do, I'll not take you through the slide deck, but I'll stop sharing here the slide deck and I'll direct from here, jump into my instance and show you the live demo, how the roadmap planning works here. So let me go here. Okay. So when you are in the here in the roadmap planning, the how you can access this on the left navigation panel, you just have to type the roadmap planning and this is the version here. So as you see here, this navigation item, the roadmap planning, 
this is tied with the alignment planner workspace right so basically as an end user we will be using the roadmap planning to create the roadmaps to, to, to create our plan but uh, as an application it is bundled along with the alignment planner workspace so if you are on the service now uh, you know app store you have to search for an application which is alignment planner workspace and when you download the alignment planner workspace you will automatically get the roadmap planning okay so once you click on the roadmap planning basically it takes you here on the landing page and this page has two tabs one is owned by me and second is shared with me owned by me actually shows you all the roadmaps that has been created by you and shared with me as the name suggests it tells that if anybody else has created a roadmap and it was shared by, with you so these are the two tabs here uh, very simple uh, if you want to create a new roadmap just click on the very right top here new roadmap minimum fields just four or five you can give the name uh, what are the start date and the end date and the source table so today the source table is basically out of the box so what is the source table it basically defines on what item you are planning your roadmap out of the box we have provided six tables for the road mapping um, which is demand project uh, epic safe epic safe feature and uh, program as an administrator in an organization you can always add more tables so if you see here i also have the change request which is not out of the box but i have just added it here so i am not going to create a new roadmap from here but what i'll show you here is that an already existing roadmap project say 2021 suppose i'm the persona who is more interested in seeing all my active projects which are they're lying for the 2021 how the plan looks like right so if you see here the start date and the end date this tells me that show me all the projects active projects which lie between these two dates and the owner is basically the one who has created that's the one so let me just quickly uh, go into this roadmap and as you see here this opens up the page which the, with these bars these bars are nothing every bar here is a project because we have created the roadmap on the table project so all these bars they they represent a project here and if you see this red line here this is nothing but your current timeline so right now we are on the 15th july kind of the mid of july so that is why this red, red line tells you that this is your current uh, time uh, current you know uh, the time period so if you want to see what is the definition of this roadmap you can come here and as i said you just have to give a start date and end date and the source table in my case is the project now if you want to filter further on the records you have the filter condition here so in my case suppose i just am interested in seeing the projects from the selected be used that's where i have put my filter condition you can give any filter condition which applies in your case a stakeholder field is the one uh, which ensures that the the people with whom you would like to share your roadmap so these people can see your roadmap they can edit the roadmap depending upon the roles i'll cover the roles in a moment here so this is how i my roadmap is uh, created over here right now what we can do here is for the uh, what i i can show you here is like the personalized right so the next thing that you can do here now th this is a very uh, busy screen i want to see more data maybe because i want to analyze more things so when i mouse over right now it is showing me the name of the project the approved start and the approved end date remember when i was on the roadmap details the start date and the end date 
out of the box, this start date and the end date for the project table is mapped with the approved start date and the approved end date, not the planned start and the planned end. That is why we are seeing here the approved start and the approved end date when I mouse over onto this one, right? And if you, this screen is very busy, right? I I want to analyze the data or I want to see some more, uh, you know, details when I mouse over. Whatever the case, you can do that by using certain uh, links over here. So let's first see what personalized does here, right? So if you see here, uh, when I personalize this, I want to see who's the project manager. So I can just, you know, switch on this toggle button here on the project manager, I can add more fields because I'm more interested in seeing what is my total plant cost, right? What's the budget here? So budget cost. I can add one more. Suppose I want to see the planned ROI percentage. At the max, I can add three more attributes. And once I do that, and then when I mouse over, along with the name and the approved start and end date, which was there previously, now three more fields are there. So this kind of gives you more uh, data items based on which you can take certain decisions if you want to you know, uh, change, the, change the start and end date, you want to drag it, drop it, something, you can do that. Okay, other than that, suppose if you have to analyze this, uh, this plan, you can group by. I would like to see based on my strategy, how the, this plan is looking like. So basically I can say, these are my strategies and first delight the customers. These are the projects which are contributing for delighting the customer from which timeline to which uh, month you know, they are going. So these are the kind of things which you can group by, you can see uh, more, easily you can analyze, you can do two levels of grouping. So for example, I say, okay, by business unit, next is by business unit, suppose. So for delighting customer, this strategy, the finance BU is doing these two projects and IT is associated with these two projects, right? So this is the kind of uh, analysis which becomes easy when you group by here. Again, maximum true attributes, uh, you can select for the group by. Now, while I'm looking at my screen here, all these things are good, but I want to see which project, you know, is high priority, which is low priority so that I can, if I have to push out certain projects, I can take that decision easily. So let's go back again on the personalize. I can color by, suppose in this case, I can color by priority. And once I do that, the small legend comes here on the uh, bottom right side, color by legend. And when I open it up, it shows me that all the purple ones are critical, yellow is high, moderate and low. So the ones which are low, suppose if, if I have capacity crunch or I don't have budget or I want to drag and drop it, say in the next quarter, I can easily do that. Okay, I can change the dates from here, like say for example, from, so I can do this also. Right. So these are the kind of things which makes your uh, working easy when you are, uh, you know, analyzing the data. Now, I see there are certain questions in the chat and I will just respond once let me complete this. But please keep posting the questions there. So once I click on personalize here, uh, I would like to uh, emphasize on one thing. This personalization that you are doing by clicking on this gear icon, the settings icon, right? Basically, this goes in the user preference. What that means? That means that if suppose you have shared this roadmap with two other folks, in my case, I have shared it with two stakeholders, say Adam and Abel, right? So for Adam and Abel, this color coding, this grouping will not be available because they will see the, the original roadmap as it was there for me. Because all the personalization that is here is just for the person who is doing it, this goes in the user preferences, okay? Uh, before I go further, let me take the chat questions here. Uh, so Kelly says, questions on the stakeholder roles. 
what kind of licensing do they need? We have business leaders. Yes, I'll cover the licensing in a moment and the roles, Kelly. So just hold on that question. Uh, my question is, is there any future possibility to create a roadmap containing more than one record? Exactly. Uh, yes, Mike, that is coming up in version 2.0. Uh, that also uh, is planned next month, August. So in the August, we are releasing version 2.0 of roadmap planning, where it will be the it will allow you the hybrid uh, thing. So for example, you can plan on uh, epics as well as say projects as well. So together, yes, that is very much possible in the second version. Uh, okay, so, okay. Okay, so Teresa's question is, is there a way to share out the color coded personalized view with the stakeholders? Teresa, not out of the box, but um, maybe you can create your own view and you can share that. Uh, but as of now, personalization is the user preference. It is just for that. And you know, there is actually, uh, let's discuss this. Uh, we were kind of uh, interviewing the customers and based on the discussions, what we understood is that this, roadmap planning because it is when you do the roadmap road mapping right it it is not done in the silos different people are seeing this roadmap and they analyze their own um, in their own way so for example if i and charles are having the same um, the roadmap i would like to uh, group it by strategies and business unit maybe charles would like to just group it by say portfolio right so if these personalizations override each other, then it would become difficult for two people to see the same roadmap. That is why personalization is just for the user who's doing it. It does not go uh, to the other users. Hope that clarifies the reason why we have done it this way. Okay. So, oh yeah, next thing which I would like to share here is, okay. Oh, there was one more question there. No, no oh, yeah, no sure. Yeah, so the next question is, when I change the timeline of the project in the roadmap, do this has an impact on the project in the system, the timeline, or oh, you mean to say the planning console, the tasks and everything? Uh, good question. And that is why uh, if you see, uh, if I go back to my roadmap planning, uh, right, uh, the dates which we have taken here, the start date and the end date, they are not the planned start date and the plan end date. They are the approved start date and the approved end date. And if you remember the tasks and the rolling up of these dates on the project, they are governed by the planned start date and date. So even if you are moving it, your task dates and your project dates, plan dates will not change. So uh, you are safe there, okay? Okay, the next point, um, which I would like to share with you here is that now that you have personalized, and, but now uh, the details that you are seeing here, maybe that is not enough. You would like to see some more details, how to do that without leaving this screen. Just click on it and you will see on the right side, a side panel opens up with the item details. We have selected the, the commonly used fields, which as a, you know, owner you would like to see, and those are here. But if these fields, you want to make any change or something, you just have to click on this edit record link, which is at the bottom on the side panel. So when you click on the edit record, it opens up in the new screen, uh, I mean to say in the new tab, and you can make the changes in your project and again, go back here. So the idea here is that, there should be minimum uh, you know, context switching when you are on the roadmap, you should see most of the things without leaving this screen. So this is on the item details where you can see more details. Now, other than that, uh, sometimes what happens is that, as I said in the very beginning, right, that uh, you have this start date and the end date, but think about you are doing the planning, uh, take a use case. Your use case here is that you are planning some agile items, right? Say uh, whatever, Epic or something. And uh, you don't have the start date and the end date. You have not populated that. So those items come here under the unscheduled items. 
these are the items which are as per your criteria of the roadmap creation belong to the roadmap they are you know associated with this but because they do not have either the start date or the end date that is why we cannot map them on this uh, timeline and hence they are shown here as the unscheduled items whenever you want to bring them up it's so easy you just drag and drop and bring them here suppose now important thing to note here is when i am dragging and dropping it i am dragging and dropping it for the strategy improve employee experience with the business unit finance but maybe the strategy and the business unit on this item is different where i am dropping from right so system asks you that do you really want to override uh, and you know make the changes in the strategy and if you are okay you can always go ahead and make the change and it will it will in the back end system will make the changes for you so that is how you can drag and drop and if you do that uh, it will change the uh, strategy and the business unit for this okay um one more thing important point so if there is no end date suppose right uh, and you are dropping it over here so what system the system automatically populates the end date which is one month from the start date and the start date is calculated where you are dropping it right so if you are dropping it upon say uh, somewhere in the may right so if i say yes then in that case it will be uh, it will take just one month uh, as an end date so start date is 185 and you see the approved end date automatically gets calculated at 176 so this is something important you should be knowing this another point roadmap planning by nature is a collaborative exercise i have not seen anybody doing the roadmap planning in silo right uh, they have to check with their stakeholders they have to talk to others uh, so in that case there are two uh, collaborative, uh, uh, you know. So one is the conversation. What you can do, just click on this conversation and suppose I can say at the rate able tutor and I can ask him a question and I can. Um, can you check the plan, right? So and just post the comment. So once this is done, Able Tutor, when he logs in, he will see uh, this and he can again converse with you on the, on the roadmap. So these are the conversations that you can do. Next is your attachments. Uh, anybody uh, who is a stakeholder can also upload the attachments and these attachments will be then viewed by all the stakeholders and the owner of the, of the roadmap. So this is on the conversation side of the roadmap. Okay, one more thing. I think there is one more question. So let me check that as well. Okay, cool. So the question here from Gary is that, is it possible to export this data as a report? How would you recommend we review this data during a meeting, right? So right now in the first version, we do not have that, uh, we do not have that export functionality, but very soon it is coming uh, in the next version. Um, maybe I don't remember whether it is in version two or version three, but it will. It is there in the backlog, Gary. So you will see that. Okay. Another point which I would like to share with you here is that all these items that you are seeing is on this timeline, and this time scale you can easily change. Right now I'm viewing at a monthly scale. Um, but if I want, I can change it to the quarter and then I can also go back to the yearly. It makes sense, uh, in my opinion, the yearly, uh, in some organizations I have seen that they create, you know, multi-year roadmaps. And these roadmaps are say three year, five year at a very high level on the big rocks, on the initiatives. And if that is the case, the yearly makes more sense. Otherwise, you know, monthly or quarterly is the one which most of the folks would like to uh, would like to see here okay so this is on the um, on the roadmap planning on the items that are here 
Now, what I'll do, I'll switch the gears and I'll log in here as the, as the admin to show you that how you can set. So if you are here and you are saying group by, what, how you are doing this uh, uh, roadmap preferences as an admin, how you can do so you can see the fields here, right? So let me switch the gears and log in here as um, impersonate here as system administrator. And when I log in as system administrator, you see another option here under alignment planner workspace, and that is roadmap preferences. Okay. So when I click on the roadmap preferences, the list that you see here is actually the list of the tables which are out of the box available for an end user to select for on which they want to do their roadmap planning. So as I said in the beginning, out of the box, we have given the project, demand, uh, epic, safe epic, safe feature, and program. But you see uh, more tables here because we have enabled them. So how to enable a new table? Uh, as long as that table has the start and end date so that you can plot it on the roadmap uh, timeline, you can enable it over here. So for example, if I want to add a new table here, I just go here and uh, take, take the table, whichever you want here, right? Say whatever. Mm. So. And start date has to be a date field. So it's not the right one. Maybe I can take the incident. One second. Right. So we need to have a start date, say actual start date, suppose whatever date you want to map here, you do that. Item name field, remember in the project, we were getting the pro project name. So, and similarly here, suppose if you have a short description or something which you would like to see, you can do that. Item owner field is the, suppose in this case, incident owner or assigned to whatever you want to give here. So let me go back once again and show you on the project, what we have done because of which you were getting as a user, uh, end user. So if I go to the PM project table, uh, remember I said the start date and the end date are not the planned start and the plan end date, and that is configured here. It is the approved start date and the approved end date. When I was mouse hovering onto the bar, I was seeing the name, right? Why? Because if you come back once again here, the item name field is mapped with the project name and the item owner here is the project manager. So because of this mapping, uh, when you come onto the roadmap as an end user, what you see here is governed from those settings. Next point, remember on the group by and the color by, we have certain fields. How does that come? So let me show you that. Here on the group by fields, these are all the fields which are coming from the, from the PM project table all these fields on the left hand side we have only selected the ones that makes more sense for grouping and for color coding uh, for group by and for color by uh, out of the box we have taken uh, the reference type and the choice list fields those fields are enabled here right uh, for the metrics field the metrics field again these are all the fields which are on the project table, but we have just selected the ones which we, which we thought that makes more sense for seeing on the bar. And for the metrics field, we have enabled all the numeric type of, uh, you know, uh, the attributes, whether it is currency, number, or percentage. So if you want, you can remove certain things and you can add some, some other attributes which you would like to see in your metrics fields. Right, so let me update this here. So any questions till now on the admin side or on the, on the end user? If not, then I will move on to the licensing. So far, I don't see any in the chat window. Any questions from the audience? I think you're good. 
Okay, cool, thanks. So what I'll do, I'll now switch over back to my uh, PPT and right. So this was one of the questions on the licensing and rules. So basically we have given three roles out of the box. One is the roadmap editor, the roadmap viewer, and last is the roadmap admin. Any persona who has the roadmap editor view can create, edit, and view the roadmaps, which means they can create their own roadmaps and they can also access the roadmaps which are shared with them and the shared roadmaps, those roadmaps also they can edit, uh, they can make the changes on the shared roadmaps. The next role is the roadmap viewer. The roadmap viewer role basically allows the user to view the roadmap where he or she has been assigned as a stakeholder. Though they have the roadmap viewer role, but they can still collaborate, which means they can, they can converse and they can add comments and they can, they can upload the attachments. They cannot add it any other thing, but they can use the collaboration tools for collaborating via comments and the attachments. The last role which we have given with this capability is the roadmap admin. And this basically is the highest role, I would say, for the roadmap planning, because this persona can access all the roadmaps and this persona can also configure the roadmap preferences. So other than the admin, like the system administrator, the roadmap admin can also configure the roadmap preferences and make the changes uh, in the fields, you know, and the mappings, as I have just shown. So these are the three roles which come out of the box. Now, coming on to the licensing side, uh, it is available for both ITBM standard and ITBM professional licenses. However, if you are having the ITBM standard license, then users can roadmap only on two tables, which is project and demand. And the roadmap admin will not be allowed to enable any other table from the roadmap preferences uh, you know, for the road mapping. They can only have projects and demands. Whereas if you're having the ITBM professional license, then you can roadmap on the six tables, which I have said uh, earlier, like the project demand program, Epic, safe Epic and safe feature. Plus the administrator can enable other tables as well, as long as they have some start date and the end date, and uh, they can be enabled for the road mapping. And also the roadmap editor role is edited to the business stakeholder license, which means that users with the business stakeholder licenses should be able to create, edit, and view the roadmaps. And this is the first version of the roadmap planning. It is compatible with the, with the QBAC release. So that's all I think I have for my presentation today. Any questions before I open up it um, up for the you know, discussion? Okay. Looks like there is no question. Hey, Namita. Hey. Uh, you had mentioned in the backlog that you can combine the project and demands. Do you know if that's 2.0 or if it's a later release, what that date would be? Uh, so our plan is for the version 2.0, we will provide the hybrid uh, capability of the roadmap planning. Hybrid capability means uh, you can take one from the agile and one from the from the traditional one, which means project and epics or you know uh, safe epic or your projects or your demands, something like that. Yeah, um, we just wanted whether, project and demand together. Is that what you mean? Um, yeah. So projects and demands together. I'll check that. I'll check that and I'll I'll let you know that whether in version two dot we have enabled that or not. But one hybrid and one traditional we have enabled. Okay, um, the other one for timing is um, when you can export it into functionality. The timing on that would be great to know. 
Um, and then also, how do we enable this? We are actually working on um, the Quebec upgrade now. Do we have to enable a plugin or something to start looking at this? Oh yeah, there is a plugin. Um, uh, there is a plugin, but if you are on the test instance of your Quebec, right? You can also do yeah. one thing. Uh, you can go to the ServiceNow App Store and you can download this uh, alignment planner workspace. Yeah, you can do that. Awesome. Uh, coming on to the first question, like the previous question on to the timing it is a very tough question uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is very tough because as of now the teams are working very hard and i think we are we are planning post version 2.0 that there is a plan it's a it's a it's a high priority backlog item let me say that way but uh, it's not confirmed that whether it will be in version 3.0 okay mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we would immediately use this when it's available if we have those elements. Um, so please keep us posted. Oh, sure. And uh, while you are using, because we are also working offline, if you have any question, let me know. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else, any feedback, any question, anything that you would like to share? Okay, Charles, I think I have a that... I have a comment mm -hmm. if that's okay. Um, I just want to um, challenge the use case you talked about for yeah. um, <clears throat> sharing the preferences. Yeah, um, I think you know I completely understand what you described. I think the use case that we're struggling with is we want to be able to share this with folks that don't use ServiceNow, that don't go mm. in and interact with records. There, mm. It's more an informational thing. And so if that's the case, I can't expect them to customize yeah. the, their preferences. And so I would prefer to be able to share. So just consider that use case. I don't think that's necessarily unique. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I just thought I would offer that up. No, thank you, Brenda. Thanks for, you know, uh, voicing that over here. And do you think if we give this export functionality, will that help or uh, still you would like to see this? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, it, it certainly could. Um, I think, you know, the, the, the real benefit of the roadmap is it's real time, right? And so mm -hmm. when you export, you lose that. I mean, my preference would be probably to maybe embed the roadmap in a dashboard if that's possible and have mm -hmm. it that way instead of, um, you know, doing an export. But that's a, that's a possibility, yeah. Okay, no, thank you so much for bringing that up. And, you know, when we were trying to do this kind of uh, uh, decision making, right, we also had, uh, struggled a lot and we have done so many interviews and then we have reached to this uh, decision but no good thanks for letting us know that and we will keep this point in mind for the next version yeah thank you thank you okay good any other questions good good good, good questions all right well i'm going to launch the poll then um Let's get some good answers here for you guys that attended. And then while that's underway, please go ahead and fill that out. And that helps to give us good feedback on the office hours. If there's any particular topics you want us to have, things like that. Is the office hour length too long or too short, things like that. Um, any other remaining questions uh, as we uh, wrap up? Uh Maybe one question which I can ask here is that, how many of you have already uh, started using the roadmap planning? Is there anybody you can, you can? We're using it. Oh, great, Brenda. So do you have any feedback other than the one that you just shared? Um, yeah, there's a, I mean, there's a small handful of things. I, you know, I look at this version one as kind of, I'm kind of waiting yeah. to version two. Um, mm -hmm. to really provide. I think my main beef is probably the same one that somebody else on the call mentioned is that I would love to combine um, demand and project in the same roadmap that 
you know, fits our um, use cases a lot better. Um, and so uh, that, that would be my one piece of feedback. I think the other thing is potentially just a scaling item. So, um, you know, our roadmap, some of our portfolios are fairly large. And so, um, you know, there's not really a great way to sort of scale it down um, to view more items. Um, and that may be something that, um, I, you know, I'm not quite sure how that would be addressed, but th those would be the two main things I would mention. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good thing, Brenda. And maybe, uh, I don't know if filtering would help you there. You can use the filtering uh, capability when you are creating the roadmap, maybe if that helps you there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you again. Yeah. All right. Well, definitely, if there aren't any other questions, I think we can end early. Uh, that's awesome. We'll get back 15 minutes everyone's day. Great job, guys. So, Thank you Thank guys so you. much. Thank you, Namadia Nam Sara. As always, uh, a pleasure having you on these and, and, and giving us some great insight into what's uh, underway with ITBM. So thank you guys for filling out the poll and the recording will be up on the community site as soon as it's available. Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.